We stand. Christ is risen. To him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. We join in singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this day, God the Father raised his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, from death. He thereby showed his acceptance of our Savior's sacrifice for our sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He takes the burden of our sins from us and offers us joy with which to dance through earthly life and on into eternity. Let us therefore freely confess our sins in the assurance that they will not come between us and our gracious God. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you burdened by the sins for which your Son died. We are ashamed. In all humility, we ask for your mercy. You have raised our Lord Jesus Christ and promised us eternal life. Forgive us, renew us, 
and lead us in the dance that is eternal life. Amen. On this most holy festival day on which our Lord conquered death in the grave, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I joyfully forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing our hymn of praise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be rescued from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for today comes from Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel." Again, you shall adorn yourself with tambourines and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Arise, and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. 
For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing our Alleluia hymn verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. As for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance of the water, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing, Awake My Heart with Gladness.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The text for our meditation this morning comes from our gospel reading from Matthew 28. I want to read those words again. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is our text, dear friends in Christ. We wrap up our Lenten series as we've been working on the crucified king, and today we finish out with the theme, The King Race, for this Easter Sunday. On the sixth day of creation, God made for himself a king. From the dust of the ground, he brought forth his king, and he placed him in the garden made just for him. He wasn't just someone for an all-powerful God to boss around or act like he was a peon of God. This man was God's representative here on earth. The king wasn't created to lollygag around the garden all day. He was made to have dominion over it and to rule over the garden. This king was created with feet, for God gave him work to do. His blessed work was to tend that beautiful garden that had been made for him and to guard it and protect it, and that meant also guarding his bride, Eve. But Adam blew it. He blew it big time, big, big time. A preacher from hell came into that garden, beautiful and glorious on the outside, but ugly and evil on the inside, and Adam actually allowed him to come into the garden. And this evil preacher, he came to his wife Adam, or Adam's wife Eve, spewing his poisonous lies to Eve. Now, Adam at that point should have taken those feet that God had made him with and planted them right between that evil preacher from hell and his wife and said, Eve, stop. Don't listen to this preacher. He's a liar. But we know how the story goes. This evil preacher was very convincing. He was a smooth talker. He knew what to say. He knew how to capture their attention. You've been mesmerized by him too if you think about it, haven't you? God graciously said to Adam, the day you eat of the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, you will die. You can eat from anything else, but don't eat from that tree. But instead of standing up to that servant, serpent as he came into the garden, he was caught flat-footed, and he did absolutely nothing. Instead, he turned his feet to his deceived wife who told him, take, eat, Adam, and Adam did eat. Almost all kings leave some kind of legacy behind, something that they are remembered for. David was a great warrior king. We remember King David who uh, um, purchased land for the construction of God's temple, and then there's King Solomon who we remember for his wisdom and for building the temple, but King Adam did nothing. And in fact, his legacy was death. His work brought tombs and graves into the world. It brought funeral homes and obituaries into the world. It brought sickness and disease. It brought fear and anxiety into this world. Before the fall, Adam and Eve, they revered God with a holy fear. And now they were scared to death of God. 
and everything else. Because of them, the world was now engulfed in fear. Little boys would now be afraid of the dark. Teenage girls would live in fear of not being thin enough or not pretty enough. Women would now fear the judgment of other women out there in the world more than the judgment of God. Men would fear conflict in the world where men needed to have courage and, and, and backbone and have self-sacrifice. And then there's mankind's conscience. There's a saying that says that death and conscience make cowards of all of us. And so mankind even feared telling the truth and being honest about himself. Instead, mankind tends to relabel his sins. I'm not really too stingy. I don't lack a generous spirit. I'm good with money. It's not stealing if the other guy's got more than enough. Indeed, death and conscience now makes cowards out of all of us in our lives. So God drove his king out of the garden and he placed security guards at the gate of that garden. Angels stood there at attention and they had flaming swords not to let anybody else back into that garden, but specifically not to to let man back in there, to keep the man from the tree of life in the garden. The garden wasn't his home anymore. Adam made man's bed and its grave and now He has to lie in it too, and so do we. But God loved that king, that king that blew it and promised one day to send another king, a greater king, his only begotten son, God in the flesh, God with feet. These feet wouldn't be the feet of a coward, but the feet of the champion who came into this world to restore all that King Adam had ruined. His feet were the feet that came to crush the head of that false preacher who deceived Adam and Eve and filled the world with fear. This king, our Lord Jesus Christ, was not caught by the enemy flat-footed. He used his holy feet to get just where he needed to be to go and help fallen man, to heal the sick, to heal the blind, to heal the deaf, the lame, feed the hungry, to walk right into a tomb as it were, and raise his friend Lazarus from the dead, to walk right into the middle of a funeral possession and raise a widow's son. He used those feet to get where he needed to go in order to instruct the ignorant, to preach to them about the entrance into the kingdom that they could never merit on their own, a kingdom that he freely bestowed. This king was just the right king to be in this world, and his feet were just the feet that we needed to save us, to open the kingdom of heaven, to open the entrance again to the garden of paradise that Adam closed up. But the way back to the garden of paradise meant that this king needed to be sliced up by the sword. A king had to bleed. A king had to have the courage to sacrifice himself for rebel people. A king who wouldn't be tempted by that evil preacher from hell to take the easy road and the easy way out and let the world be damned by itself. And guess what? Jesus Christ didn't blow it. He had the royal feet that willingly staggered to the cross as this king shouldered your sins and my sins and the sins of all the world all the way to that cross. He had the royal feet that laid in the grave to heal your wandering feet. But what good is a dead king? What good are the feet of a king if he's dead and those feet can't move whatsoever? How can a dead king give out gifts, give out a share in his kingdom, give honor and glory to his rebel subjects? What good is merely a crucified king? if that king is not raised to show his wounds and to bring peace to man's guilty conscience. It's no good that way. So God, the heavenly Father, the Father of Jesus Christ, raised up this king to be our king raised. The crucified king raised from the dead so that you might have forgiveness of sins and reign with him forever in heaven. 
that you might see that you are no longer in your sins, so that you might see in him death has no power over you anymore, so that you might hear and rejoice in the results of what our king's holy feet actually did accomplish. Satan's head was crushed and his accusing mouth was shut. Our king, Jesus Christ, was raised on this holy day. And what wonderful things we hear about. We see the sad and, and scared Marys filled with joy and gladness at the angels preaching as they came to the tomb. We see the stone that's been rolled back and nobody inside of that tomb catching a glimpse of our own future graves. Remember way back in the Garden of Eden, as I said, how those angels stood at attention, guarded the entrance of the Garden of Paradise. How different things are this morning on Easter morning. See, the angel preacher is there, and he's sitting in white, not imposing. He's not even standing on his feet. He's simply sitting down. He simply sits in the garden graveyard and preaches a short but magnificent sermon to those ladies. Do not be afraid. I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen as he said. This king has on the cross dealt with and conquered all that could ever make you afraid again. See how Mary Magdalene and the other Mary take hold of those blessed feet of our Lord Savior for the second Adam as Jesus comes to them and he preaches to them, and he preaches that same sermon the angel just preached and says, don't be afraid. They worshiped at the feet of their Savior and King, who took the bed that Adam had made for man, and who laid in that bed actually for three days and emptied it of all of its dread and power for us. How great was that sixth day when God made himself a king with feet? But how much greater is what happened on this day, this Easter Sunday morning, the eighth day, the first day of the new creation, when God placed his king back on his pierced feet, that you might have forgiveness of sins, the strengthening of faith, life and salvation, and reign forever with him in paradise. Amen. And now may the peace of God which goes beyond all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We stand for prayer. Let us pray for ourselves, for all who celebrate our Lord's resurrection, for the whole body of Christ and for all people according to their needs. For ourselves, that the reality of Christ's resurrection would cause us to consider those things that are above, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer for all who trust that our Lord has paid for our sins once and for all, that they use all their resources to tell the world that salvation is available to everyone who trusts in him, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole body of Christ, that the bedrock faith of Jesus' resurrection will be the foundation for new dialogue and understanding, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are burdened by the things of this world, by doubt or fear, by sickness or grief, that the Holy Spirit would give them a confident faith that trusts in God, who raised Jesus from death, let us pray to the Lord. Is the Lord. Hear our prayer. For all who must deal with chronic ills and medical emergencies, that God would strengthen their faith to trust him until he grants them the healing that he knows is best, let us pray to the Lord. For all who mourn on this holy day, 
that the Holy Spirit would strengthen them through their days of darkness until they may find their faith renewed in Easter confidence and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray for the sake of your Son, our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing our next hymn. We stand. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Assured of the victory Jesus has won for us by the power of his resurrection, we leave the presence of our God with his benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's so good to see you all here this morning as we gathered in our Lord's house to celebrate his resurrection. And oh, what a wonderful day it is. We thank and praise our Lord for that sacrifice he made for our sins. If you are traveling yet this weekend or going to go traveling yet, please be safe and God keep you as you travel to see family and friends. As you go about your walk with the Lord this week, remember that our Lord didn't turn his feet away. Our Lord put his feet down, planted them firmly between Satan and us and died on that cross for us so that we could have life and salvation. Happy Easter to all of you. I'll see you in the back.